Ladies and gentlemen, today is February 26, 2014, and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 170. 170. I'm your host, Kane Lafferty, and this is the show where we learn to be better artists, and we do have to be a little bit quieter today, and close the door to the bathroom, because that is unprofessional. But today we are jumping back into our Diablo 3 marketing art for the upcoming release of Reaper of Souls. Featuring the monks, and today I'm going to be showing you my process that went into making the male monk. And for those of you who want to see everything that was leading up to this point, uh, whereas how I drew the female monk, check out episodes 169, 68, and 67. I'm doing an entire, I'm basically showing you guys my entire technique, my entire process from beginning to end, is what I'm calling the series. And yeah, a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do something like this, where I show you the entire process of how I create a piece of marketing art, a finished piece of painted, hyper, I don't know, rendered marketing art and all that stuff. So yes, let's go ahead and continue with where we left off yesterday via time lapse. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do, as I did yesterday, was I cut out the character that I was gonna be using, and I just, made a brand new layer with him on it, that way I could just focus on him. And what I'm doing here is basically, I really want you guys to pay attention to how I start with this. Look, look at how simple this entire pose and this entire thing is. And really I think that so much, so many people like they go into a piece of artwork or they just try to draw this character and they get so caught up in I don't know, like worrying about like anatomy and worrying about like, oh, well, how are all the muscles going to look? And they start like trying to draw all these details in and drawing the face and all this stuff. When really what you should be doing is making sure that your beginning shapes are working properly. Just the general flow of him doing his kicking move. And then just this little line right here representing his arm kind of coming up like that. And then just this thing up here representing his head. I just really, I really think of it the more I do digital art, the more I'm starting to think of it as sculpting. It really is. Uh, you start with, you know, the base. You start with the base shapes, and then you start adding on to it. And you start just, like, kind of shaving away, adding, subtracting, and all that stuff. And what I ended up pulling in right here, right here, this uh, thing, this red artwork, this is actually a set of notes that I drew on top of this one. And I actually turned his torso a little bit more towards the camera. And his face and his arms are like this way, and there's more of like a twist happening with his legs, and they're like kicking upwards. And I like that a little bit more, because I felt like this one, like his arms are like this already. They're like already facing up, and he's doing the kick. So we'd be seeing sort of like the back end of his shoulder, whereas this, we're turning the torso back in, and we can see more of his face now. And I, I really like that a lot more. Plus, I felt like it just had a little bit more energy in the kick. I don't know exactly how to explain it. But here I am refining. Look, check it out. Just adding shapes on very quickly. Look, this is, represents an arm, right? And then very soon I'll be like, eh, that's not exactly how I want it to be. And I'll just redraw it. See how simple that is? See how much time I didn't waste by worrying about putting all the muscles in place and drawing the entire musculature of the hand, only then later to realize that I didn't like that position. Really? Just you have, or just the only thing that you have to do is just lay down those shapes. All right. So, continuing. Again, just drawing in some simple shapes for the face, the beard, and trying to get this foot to look right. You know, even though I, I like karate kicks where they kind of point the toe at the end, I really wanted this guy to be kicking some demon. Like, he's going to be kicking like some goat man in the throat or something. I thought that would be really funny. And I really wanted his heel to be out there. So, that is what we are focusing on. <clears throat> and yes, you will have to forgive me for releasing this episode a little bit later. I wanted to do it a little bit earlier in the day, but um, I had some things that I needed to do with my friend over at the local university. I was doing a little film project, and I was an actor in it, although it was a very interesting role. But you guys didn't come here to hear about that. You came to look at this. So let's continue. So um, while I'm drawing in like these little details and stuff, same thing that, that, that's going through my mind. It's like the big, big areas of rest, so AKA this um, this big piece of fabric on his leg. Then you got medium, and then these small little details and the little bracelet thing or, around his ankle or whatever. Yeah, 
Mm. I just had a big bottle of really good root beer, so the carbonation is like really getting to me. I feel like I have to like burp or something. But if I do, we have a nice mute button for that. But I think we're going to be okay. It's going to be a little bit of heartburn, indigestion. I just had a lot of pizza too. Ooh, man. Anyway, continuing, continuing. Really just focusing on right here. I want you guys to notice what I did with this belt. Notice how this belt is kind of like it's not exactly in the proper perspective. I wanted to make it feel like his torso was leaning a lot more towards us, like like this, right? So the the ellipses would be a lot more rounded. Whereas this, the it's not rounded enough. So watch how I erase this and add it add it back on there, and then just basically turn the belt down and increase the ellipse. I also moved his entire torso down as well. See right there. I just brought that ellipse way out, and then that really helps to communicate that his torso is now coming more towards us. It gives him a little bit more of a 3D feel to him. So here I am experimenting with a couple more arms. And then I eventually, like at first I was like, oh, maybe I should do this one where he's kind of like got his arm up like this, and that'll look really cool. But after I kind of erased it, I didn't really like it. So I ended up just going back to what it originally was. My original plan. Plan A. Went back to plan A. I'm just kind of refining that. Finding that sucker, and then what I do is I bring him back into the entire piece, drop the background or the mock background behind him, and try to position him so that he looks good with our lady monk. Continuing, paying attention to a couple things, kind of comparing a couple layers, because each time I make changes to one of the sketches, I always like to duplicate it up. That way, I can always just kind of check back and see, oh, did that. Hand was that hand positioning a little bit better? Uh, which one? Which one of these uh, sketches is conveying the most amount of energy? Right, because I'm really about like just like flow and communicating very clearly the energy of the kick or whatever action your character is performing. You don't want your character to appear stiff. In fact, sometimes you can make some concessions with the anatomy to make something feel, you know, just that much more impactful. So now we're moving into, and I'm really glad you guys get to watch me do this. We're moving into the face. And this is basically how I go about doing it. In fact, I'm going to rewind it and just watch it one more time. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I start with. I want you guys to just watch how I sculpt this face from the original sketch. To see how I just, I'm just kind of like pushing, pulling, erasing, and adding. That's all I'm doing to create this face. It's already there. I can, I can see the general idea of it, the general shape. And now all I'm doing is just kind of like pulling it out of the, the, the block of marble that was there before, if you will. Making some small changes to make sure he doesn't look like an alien with a giant head. Um, yeah, just kind of widening it out, making sure that I don't know. I just, I really, I just feel like when when the face looks right, I just know it. Like I just keep kind of messing around with it. I know the general idea of what I want with a face, but when it just has that exact expression and the exact character that I'm looking for, I'm just like, that's it, that's it, and I just feel it. It's really cool. So I hope that you guys. Can get a feeling like that too. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. It's just like that artistic instinct. You know when you've got it right. And you know when there's just, it's not quite hitting that mark yet. And this guy's details are not going to be as important because he's a little bit further back. He's probably going to be a little bit more obscured by atmosphere, lighting, mist, and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I'm not as concerned about his uh, details as uh, much as I am with the female. Uh, who is in the front, who we can very clearly see a lot of the details of her clothes. His his clothes, or the details in his clothing, I want to be a little bit more, I don't know, simple. Simple and, and easier to tell from, from farther away. So, yes. Yeah, that's basically all I'm doing. Just kind of like lighting, lighting things, making sure that everything looks right. Um, I did have some reference for like a karate kick. So I was like, how the heck do people actually do like a kick where their legs literally split in the air? I was like, I could never do that. I freaking try to do like a karate kick and I can barely make like an L with my with my other leg <coughs> without freaking feeling like I'm going to break something, strain something. So, but yeah, I really liked this. I really liked the way that this was feeling. So now, um, yeah, that's it. So let's go ahead and just review everything that happened today. Let us review and let's zoom in and take a look at some of the details because I know that's what you want to look at. So 
Um, here is the face. Let's, let's focus on the face first. Okay, so this is what we started with. Remember, this, see that? That, that is a face right there. Okay, that's what we start with. Then what I did was I added in this right here. Or wait a minute, sorry. It's kind of a big change. It's not even in the same position, but whatever, it's all good. So I very, very quickly just kind of like sculpted out, kind of erased a little bit of this type of, uh, this thing. Like just these shapes, I was like, ooh, there's the nose, here's the eye, and there's the mouth. And just that right there told me the the like basically the character that I was looking for. That and I had done some concepts early on for what I wanted these characters to generally look like. So it's really nice to be able to look at something like this and be like, yes, I like this face, I like this character, I want to make sure this is being conveyed in the final piece. Same thing with this guy. I really like this little design that I made in his beard, and I wanted to make sure that I brought that to the final piece. As well as just his general demeanor. Kind of like he's kind of got like the the tank expression from the comic where his eyes are just like kind of low. He looks kind of like tired and ticked off at the same time. So I wanted to really uh, make sure that I was getting that there as well. So, um, but with this in general, I think the nose kind of changed a little bit, and I liked it. I liked the slightly bigger nose, almost like the flat nose. Thought it made him look really cool. So I was like, all right, let's go with that. Let's roll with that. <clears throat> so after that. I think it's just, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's really just look at look at how loose this stuff is, and look at all of the. I'm really just focusing on flow and making sure more than anything that at least the body and just the way that it's contorting itself and the kick that he's throwing or kick that he's you know doing. You can throw a kick, right? Kick a kick, <laughs> whatever, whatever he's doing. The kick that he is delivering, making sure that, that looks good. And then we add the clothes and all the details on top of it. So and that's where we get to here. Now we're starting to really refine the face and make sure that we're getting uh, that character in there. And I got that really cool kind of long nose, and then it kind of the, the bridge comes out, and then it kind of flattens. I thought that that looked really nice on him, giving some cool character. I just think of like the monks are very like sturdy, kind of like strong people. So I imagine their faces being like very chiseled, like rocks. And that's what I wanted this guy to look like. And this little line that happened, this happened because I actually like lassoed something and kind of moved it around. But I actually kind of like that line in there. It almost looks like a scar or something, you know, going across his forehead there. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, and he lost his little dots. I need to put the dots back on his forehead. So he can be a true monk, not an imposter. All right. And with that, I think that is going to conclude today's lesson. I know it is a little bit of a shorter one, but I was a little bit strapped for time today, but yeah, I mean, the piece is coming together pretty well. I'm really happy with how everything is working. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to be working on next uh, tomorrow is probably just doing a little bit more refinement on his pants there. Probably going to draw in the goat man or whatever demon he's freaking kicking in the face over here, uh, which is going to be really funny. <laughs> I can't wait to draw that. And yeah, I'm probably going to start working on Malthael. Probably going to start concepting and kind of cleaning up, sculpting Malthael. And then after that, it's just a matter of like laying in some background elements, getting everything prepped and ready for color, and we're going to start moving into the final bits of the, the drawing. And isn't that funny? Isn't that funny that like literally, like most of the drawing now for my technique, it's all set up. Like it's all black and white lines. Because what's really cool about this is that you've laid down a lot of the, the values and stuff that you want to preserve in the final piece. So when you just drop the colors behind it and then you color the lines, it's almost like it does a lot of the work for you. And it's really, really easy. Sometimes I feel like it's too easy. Like if this was me like a year ago, I'd be telling myself, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's too cheap. That's, that's too easy. I shouldn't rely on Photoshop to be able to do that. You know, I shouldn't I shouldn't have to work in black and white and then just lay the colors behind it, you know, like some cheapskate second rate artist. The point is is that it works. The point is is that it gives you great it gives you great results in the same amount of time. Or it gives you great results in less time with minimal effort. Like it allows you to just focus everything into bringing your style, bringing your style and focusing on what you want the picture to look like when it's done. As opposed to, oh hey, let me make some really really clean line art and then kind of throw on the colors and maybe kind of hope that something will turn out well. Or hope that, you know, 
it'll all work out. Or I got to do a color comp over here. You know, I got to do a color comp so that I know what that's going to look like. But then go back over here, make clean line art, and drop it, mask it, and do all this stuff. It's like you don't need to do that stuff anymore. Not not with this technique. You just lay down the values, lay down the black and whites, throw the color behind it, color the lines, and then go over with some overpainting little effects and stuff. So it's super easy, and I'm excited to show you guys the rest of the technique. I hope this is going to give you a greater insight into all the things that I've learned throughout working in the industry, and just little things that I've noticed that, you know, like, I know the results that people are looking for, and I think that sometimes people think that it's a really complicated thing that you need to get to to, to create, like, high-quality marketing art, when really there's actually a very simple or simplified process that, that works really well for me that maybe will work well for you guys. But... Let's not count our chickens before they hatch because we still have to finish this before I can say, hey, yes, this has been a success, and I would recommend this technique to you guys. But from what I've been seeing so far, I think it's going to work out really well. I'm really excited with how this is going. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like everything's coming out exactly like I wanted it to, if not even better. I really like the way this girl looks, and I like the way the guy looks too. I'm super excited to do Malfail, as well as all of our demon buddies coming in. And yeah, I think everything should be good. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end 170, episode 170 of the Can Kale Show. Thank you guys for joining me on YouTube. Please thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. Also, let me know if you guys have noticed that the, like, the changes in the quality. Now that I can pre-record these shows, I can actually film them in a higher quality. Like, there's a higher bit rate. Probably not as much like lag or not as much noticeable compression in the videos. So let me know if you guys have noticed that and if you appreciate it. But until next time, you guys take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, take care.